Well, it doesn't take long. I mean, Masters Week brings out the best and worst of everybody. I, this is my question to Brandel Chambly. How long are we going to have to put up with you taking shots at players who went to live? How long is it going to be? Is it another week, another year, forever? How long are you going to be the one to determine and decide what is right and what is wrong and the reasons why people made decisions they made? How long, please answer the question, do we have to do this for? <sighs> I'm, it's a hot one. I mean, someone's got to like go and talk to this guy and just like have a conversation because he takes um, everything, all comments that I read about this, about the shots he takes at players who bounce to live, 99% of the comments, from what I could tell, are anti Brandel Chambly. Very few people are supporting him. And I think, look, early on, I could see the reaction. I can understand it. The It was a big, like, shock to the system when people and this whole live uh, league came about. But now we're in season three. And we're still, now it's still, we're taking shots at John Rom. All right. <sighs> Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Because we're, we're putting it out there. We're the checks and balances. That's fine. Look. I'm not just hating on the guy. I think there needs to be checks and balances and conversations to be had because you can't just have a one-sided conversation. And that's what it seems Brando Chambly is doing over and over and over and over. So make sure you subscribe, all right? Leave your comments below for this one too because I want to know your thoughts on what's going on. Golf Channel is becoming not just him either. It's becoming unbearable to watch because every chance they get they throw comments out there and it's they're very very like subtle some of them and planned out it's almost like they have a whole list of things and trigger words to say to just kind of subliminally and then every now and then throw a jab at live golf they're constantly saying oh the 72 holes 72 holes some of these players aren't really you know geared up for 72 holes just all the commentators are throwing shots at the live players and it, you do that to people you're afraid of. When people come around, you do it because you're scared and you're intimidated by them. And it's like, why? Why do that? What if one of them wins? Then what are you going to do? And there's a good chance one of them's going to win because Brooks is playing well. Rom's playing great. You've got uh, Sergio Garcia's playing really well. There's, you know, Bubba Watson, he started off strong last week. Like, you just never know. He plays well two-time champ, so it could happen. But why does Brandel have to constantly take shots, especially like this week recently at John Rahm, saying that, you know, he knows why he went. It's all greed. It's driven by greed. It's at a, they, they not, you know, we, we all, none of us know where our money, whose money our hands was in before it got to us, but he knows. He knows where his that money was, and he knows why he took it, and he knows why he's being paid to take it. And it's all driven by greed. That's what Brandel said. <laughs> it's, that's, it. that's all he's got, right? Here's what's what kind of gets me is that why is Brandel Chambly the morality barometer for all of golf, for all of what's right and what's wrong politically in the world of golf? Why is he the guy who gets to decide why those guys made the decisions they made? Why does he get to be the ultimate decision maker and the one to tell everybody the real truth? So if John Rom gives us a reason why he went to live, if he tells us why, why does Brandel get up there and like, no, the real reason is this, that's why. He went and he knows it. What? Why does he get to be the one to decide the real truth? Who gave that guy the license to the Bible truth, the truth Bible? He doesn't know why John Rom really left. But what we can do is take John Rom at his word because the guy doesn't have a habit of lying to everybody. I think we should believe these guys. And there's no reason not to. I think we should. I think we should take them at their word. Now, 
what he says a lot of times is they've justified it in their own minds so it makes sense to them so that they can do these things and get the money. But the true reason behind it all is greed. He even says that they're, they believe that's the real reason, but it's not. Like, he could even, this is what's great about the, the secret superpowers of Brandel Chambly. He could go inside their psyche and go past what they've convinced themselves of what, of why they made the decisions they made. And he can extract and pull out the truth in their soul. That's the secret powers of Brandel Chambly. Wow, what an awesome, you know, thing to be able to do. Good job, Brandel. How do you do that? What am I thinking right now, Brandel? Can you read my mind? Can you? <laughs> you know, that's what's bizarre to me. I'm not thinking anything negative of the guy, to be honest. I think he's like well prepared. He comes, he's educated, he's well spoken. He does a good analysis job uh, when he's not getting his own political beliefs involved into the conversation. Why can't you just be? An, analyst, an, an analyst, a reporter, somebody who, but why do you have to go and tell us the real truth of somebody else? That makes zero sense and it's not reality. Here's what I would like. This is my proposal to the Chambly is debate me, debate me. You're more experienced in this world of golf you know more about the world of golf right you do debate me have a conversation here's how i go into every debate conversation conversation is like this i expect you to change my point of view to some degree 99 nine times out of 10 it's i i i get swayed because there, you bring up things i hadn't thought about and it softens my view or changes it in some perspective all the time. Sometimes on rare occasions when I have a conversation with somebody, they actually change my mind more towards me <laughs> because they're so off. Like it makes zero sense. And hopefully I have the same effect on other people that like I expect and hope that other people go into a debate, not to say, I'm right and you're wrong. It's here's what I believe. Here's what you believe. And after our conversation, we're closer together. That's my goal every time. It's not that you're wrong. It's just he's unchecked. He's unchallenged. There's been no he's like a football team that says they're undefeated, but they never played anybody either. That's what's going on here. He says he he won the Super Bowl of and analysts, not even analysts of he's won the Super Bowl of the debate on live golf and the reasons why he's won the championship, but he's never won against anybody. He's never had a real conversation. He's never had anybody really challenge him. He's just had people online. If those are easy to kind of slough off, they're like, oh, they're just trolls on social media. And he's blocked. like, I'm blocked. I can't even follow him on Twitter. So I've got to get it from a repost all the time from somebody else, which is weird. Like why? I don't know. Because when real people, not real people, but when people challenge you that have a say, you don't like that. You don't, you, you don't like it. So I would say, let's, let's talk about it. Come on here. I'll come on there. I don't care. Whatever. We'll go sit in a bar and talk either way off offline. And we can go, both come back and report what happened. I don't care. I don't really care. But I just don't think it's fair for you, Brandel Chambly, to be the morality police, the truth police about why people do things the way that the decisions they've made and that you get to tell the world on your high horse how wrong they are, how bad they are, and how good you are. And I don't think that you should judge 
this type of decision on some moral level that might not equal other moral like all your morality should be on what like we sh you shouldn't be the one who, s who says what's right and wrong because then your whole life wouldn't match up to that it just wouldn't so that's why a lot of people have spiritual barometers of morality because it's set they don't have to set it it's already done and they try to live up to that and it's impossible no one ever does but they, that's the the bar right that's the standard so that, but you, what, what's yours? What, what's your standard on what's right and wrong? We don't know. That's the problem. It's you. You're basically saying you're the God of this situation and that you get to decide what is good and what is evil. And you don't, you don't get to decide that. Somebody else gets to decide it and it's not me. <laughs> so I don't think you're, um, I don't think you get that, that crown either way. I would love to have a conversation about this on air, on a podcast, in a bar. I don't care. Let's do it. Let me know your thoughts. It's hot. I hate it when I hate it when people talk and say the, what interpret other people's things they've said and change it and say, no, that's not the true. Here's what's true. This is what they said, but this is what they mean. <laughs> when you don't know, it's bizarre to me. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for listening. Take care.